Hey y'all, welcome back to Ascending with Ashley. I'm Ashley. Um, this is Collective Coffee. <clears throat> A few things. Um, let's start in the Middle East and then come back to America. Um, so, supposedly yesterday, um, when Netanyahu left the UN, I think it was yesterday, um, and went back to Tel Aviv, um, Yemen, the Houthis of Yemen, um, who are the ones that have been blocking the Red Sea, uh, fired some rockets or bombs or whatever, um, at the airport, um, and apparently, uh, people are speculating or talking about, um, how Netanyahu may have been injured with a pretty severe head injury. Um, I saw a couple accounts of it, I don't know if it's true, but I just wanted to put this here, um, that's... A pretty large development if it is true um but it might not be true uh anyway i mean it is true that they had like shot at the the airport but the results of that were not positive um so anyway um now i want to talk about <sighs> remember that even if netanyahu was hurt like that there's an entire you know just because it's one person and everyone thinks that he's the one leading the charge it's not just him um again it's kind of like how they just took out the head of hezbollah um there's way more of that than just one person um you know like the entire united states is supporting this so like congress wise um senate whatever i don't know the the higher ups elite they're all you know they all get funding from apac um so literally everyone that you voted for is unless it's jill stein um <laughs> anyway um so just remember if netanyahu was in fact hurt or injured there will be someone stepping into that place um i think that one thing that the western history has really done a disservice of has been really um putting solo people out there as like a means to an end when there's entire movements um both on both sides right so like think about mlk think about malcolm x like they were really put on pedestals and yes both assassinated um <laughs> by the government right but, like, if you're thinking, you know, like, think Hitler, right? Like, there was an entire Nazi regime behind him. It wasn't just him uh, doing everything. You know what I mean? So just remember, if that is the case, if he was injured, um, someone will be stepping into that place. Um, it's, it doesn't mean that things are going to get better, right? That's the bottom line um, that I want to make with a lot of words. Um, and then I want to talk about the devastation that's happening in the south of the south um east of the united states specifically north carolina um i think alabama's been affected georgia florida tennessee um so there was like huge ass um floods dams breaking um and there have been so now that that's passed like the initial situation um, it's been a couple days, and people from the Carolina, North Carolina specifically, a lot of people are talking about how uh, how crazy it is. Um, so, like, there's thousands of dead bodies, apparently. Um, someone just posted that there were, like, little kids looking for their parents, and they were, like, butt naked. Um... The situation has gotten really bad. Apparently, there's, like, um, people are kind of going a little bit crazy, uh, because the stores, like, everything got destroyed. In some of these towns, everything got destroyed, so people don't have food, they don't have water, they don't have means to take care of their children, things like that. So, I guess people are going kind of crazy. Um, that's what's being reported. There are a few people that I've seen on TikTok give your first hand accounts um there's like no electricity no uh water running water um lots of people's homes and cars have been washed away like have you seen the footage it's insane um and apparently i just saw yesterday it was circulating that 
the National Guard for Tennessee, which is like about 700 people. Again, take what I say with a grain of salt because I'm just sharing what I'm seeing and hearing. Um, it's not an absolute truth. Uh, nothing really is unless you know it is, right? Um, but there were people saying that the seven, I mean, I believe it. There were 700 National Guard that were sent to the Middle East that were supposed to be like for Tennessee, supposedly. Um, so, I don't know, it's a pretty awful situation, um, like, roads have been taken out, so people, like, there's no way that, like, you know, semis and logistical people can get in there, um, I just saw, so the organizing that's happening is pretty cool, um, I'm seeing a lot of that on my TikTok because I've been interested in seeing what's happening, um, and people are organizing, there's lots of people sending, um, you know, if people have the means. So, like, people are going in with, like, ATVs. There are some people with boats. There are some people who are organizing um, mutual aid. There's other people who are using their helicopters or drone access. Um, I guess there's, like, been a pretty large uh, call for people with helicopters, and that's been, like, a really good response. Um, people are having to be airlifted out of places if they are surviving or if they're, like, still alive. Um, but I, ha like I said yesterday, I don't watch mainstream media news. Um, I think that's really bad for our health. Um, but I know from what I've seen on TikTok that, like, this isn't being covered. Like, the, the atrocities that are happening and, like, the, and, um, it just feels like another cover-up situation, right, that we do so much, we don't, we don't, they do, <clears throat> so much of, um, and so, I just wanted to, uh, put this out here, and let you know, um, if you want to get involved in any way, I actually met a friend yesterday, made a friend yesterday, um, <laughs> and he is someone who rides, um, like, he jumps trains, and shit anyway um and so i told him what was happening i'm like don't go to the south because it's all fucked up and he's like what he didn't know what i was talking about because i don't think he has a phone um but yeah that was pretty interesting i think it's interesting is because i saw a tiktok about people who were jumping trains like the day prior and i commented and i was like this looks fun but like i would never do it you know it's very dangerous but yeah he and then i met someone in real life who does that kid poor thing anyway um i gave him some money so again if you can help people help people um especially in these times i did tap into the collective energy last night which i really wish i wouldn't have done um because i woke up in severe pain um but the image and feeling that i got when i did tap in was like someone having rocks or like gravel being pushed down their throat um that was the feeling of the collective at this time whether you know whatever part of the world you're in um that's how we're feeling you know um a lot of people have drowned uh, there's been a lot of loss and death and I think another thing that's coming out of like the what's happening in the south is that there are people organizing on Facebook to try and help people find their relatives um, like I said the organizing efforts coming out of the south are really really um, beautiful to see honestly um, and it just sucks that it takes such extreme atrocities to make folks organize or, you know, light that fire for people to come together. Um, I think for collective liberation, like, something we're all working on and, like, could work on better is, like, forming those things before they're needed. Um, I think that's a really important thing to think about. Um, that's what organizing is. Lots of people do that. Um, but yeah, joining efforts before it's necessary is pretty important. Um, treating people the way you want to be treated, um, not thinking that you're, you know, obsolete from any tragedy is also important. Um, privilege does not protect you from, you know, 
disasters uh, for the most part. Um, and then also there's a big a bio lab in Georgia um, caught on fire yesterday. So Georgia is going through floods and then there's like this huge bio lab fire. Um, so I just want to remind everybody about, you know, specifically last year too, um, how many railroad and warehouse fires there were um, affecting air quality, where those chemicals ended up, how those things are um, affecting us, right, at like micro levels that we don't even know. Um, and yeah. If you want to uh, learn more about other people, other ways of life, um, I'm going to recommend you watch Peter Santanillo's cha channel, YouTube channel. Um, he's been to Appalachia, he's been to East Palestine, Ohio after the train thing happened. Um, and I think I've watched both of those. I've watched, there's, there's a few from Appalachia. You can also watch um, Soft White Underbelly if you want to learn more about like individual struggle. But he also, that's Mark Lyota, Lyota I think his name is. Um, he also has been to Appalachia. Um, and so that's the folks that are like really um, impacted by what's happening here. Again, those are like coal miners. Um, really, you know poor folks um so uh i think when we think back to katrina if you think back to katrina you should um that was predominantly black and brown folks who were affected by those levees breaking um but there was even a, a woman who came on from who did survive katrina and she said like this was you know, what's happening in the South is completely different than Katrina because, like, their entire, you know, we had, our houses were still standing, um, we still had road access, you know, once the water went away, um, and, like, yeah, it was horrible, but what's happening now is different because there's, like, entire stores and, um, roads and houses have been washed out, right? Um, people's houses were washed out. Were the people in them? We don't know, um, right? So, just really fascinating because I know, especially with it being an election year, I feel like the response from the government is interesting, honestly, um, because they're just funneling more money to Israel. So, um, I don't know. What I'm seeing coming out of there kind of reminds me of some of the scenes from Civil War that I watched that with that Kristen Durst movie, Dunst, whatever, um, Kirsten, I don't know, um, <laughs> that movie, um, when they are, they're traveling on the East Coast in that movie, and so some of the scenes, yeah, it wasn't a flood, it wasn't, it was Civil War, but it still is reminding me of some of that, especially the first hand reports that are coming out of people basically going feral, um, there are police forces who I guess are, um, like guarding grocery stores <laughs> so i'm gonna remind you to get some seeds um yeah seeds take time but you know do your prep watch mommy preps um ultimately if a flood you know flooding and fires are a really big reality here in the united states um pretty regularly like at least pretty much all the time someone's being flooded or somewhere is on fire which is pretty weird to say um but, but again i'm going to remind you with winter coming up um if you are not firsthand experiencing what folks in the southeast are experiencing um you still have time to take care of your house get your house in order um get some shit ready um but most importantly look out for others you know build relationships in your community with your neighbors um, make sure you have some people to call in case these things happen. Um, okay, I'm gonna let you go. I highly suggest looking at what's happening. Um, it's pretty intense. I'm gonna get back on TikTok and see. Um, but I don't know. I mean, people, there's complete blackouts. So, like, I know Starlink was trying to put something in... Um, somewhere, but yeah, it's, it's intense. Um, you know, if you live by a dam, I was thinking about that because we're by Hoover Dam. Um, you know, 
think about where you are think about you know that's the thing that's really important is like when you see these things happen to other people um instead of being like oh my god that would never happen to me think of the ways that it could and prepare for that okay have a good one